That's the next speaker. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Alejo Vidal Cuadras. Uh, he is the Vice President of the European Parliament and the President of the International Committee in Search of Justice. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to participate in this meeting. I was, in effect, Vice President of the European Parliament since 1999 until 2014, so 15 years in total, but I'm not at the moment, so I'm former Vice President of the European Parliament. Um, during my years in the European Parliament, together with other colleagues, um, we formed an international platform that we call In Search of Justice International Committee to support the struggle of the Iranian resistance in the uh, courts of justice in the United States, in, in Europe, to be removed from the, from the blacklist. This international platform that was supported by thousands of parliamentarians from both sides of the Atlantic, today is a, an NGO, a think tank, based in Brussels with the name of In Search of Justice International Committee. And uh, we have produced in recent times several reports on different matters, on the Iranian nuclear program, on the uh, political analysis of the conflict in the Middle East, on the Iranian elections. But I want to refer to one report that you can read in our website that we have published very recently, in the month of August. Uh, on the 16th of August, uh, we at IAJ International Committee produce a comprehensive report on the audio file uh, that uh, <coughs> records a conversation that the late uh, Grand Ayatollah Montazeri uh, had with some uh, uh, members of the so-called uh, Death uh, Committee that was in charge of uh, executing mm, of the massacre of 30,000 political prisoners uh, belonging to the uh, organization, the uh, PMOI, the People's Muaddin of Iran. It must be remembered that Montazeri was, at that time, number two of the Iranian regime. He was the successor, appointed successor, of Ayatollah Khomeini. Um, this uh, massacre was, uh, um, was executed uh, under the, by order of Ayatollah Khomeini uh, with a fatwa. Uh, these people were um, hanged in the period of a couple of months, 30,000 people. They were buried in mass graves and the families were unable to grieve for their loved ones. The conversation of Ayatollah Montazeri that has been, uh, as I say, published, uh, audio record, is a conversation of about 40 minutes with three of these members of the death committee. It must be said that these were three members of the death committee of Tehran, because there were similar committees in different provinces of, of, of Iran. That was the Tehran uh, death committee. And, uh, the conversation is very dramatic. Um, Ayatollah Montazeri uh, expresses his reject uh, of his horror uh, for this uh, massacre, for this crime, and he uh, asks the uh, executioners to stop the killings, and he says in a certain moment of the conversation, this is the biggest crime that uh, we have seen in contemporary, uh, in contemporary history of Iran. Uh, it must be said that Ayatollah Montazeri had no sympathy for the uh, PMOI. He was part of the regime. He was number two of, of Khomeini. So his testimony is really meaningful because a man of the regime expresses his horror in front of this uh, uh, massacre. Um, by the way, it is interesting to note that one of the three people that uh, speak to Montazeri in this conversation today is the Minister of Justice of the Islamic Republic of, of Iran. 
Um, after this opposition of Ayatollah Montazeri to the massacre, he was dismissed, he was dispossessed of all his titles, he was humiliated by Khomeini, and he was put under home arrest until his death. That was in 2009. So uh, he paid a very high price. In the same way, his son, that made public the, this audio tape, is paying today the consequences of his uh, love for truth. Let me emphasize very briefly a few points. The first point is that uh, Khomeini's fatwa of killing members and supporters of PMOI, well, I said killing, I should say exterminating them, leaves no doubt that he ordered a crime against humanity. Therefore, all the people who had a role in implementing this decree, this fatwa, were also involved in a crime against humanity. The second point is that this massacre, this genocide, did not stop in 1988. In fact, it continues until today. Uh, very recently, on the 2nd of August, 25 Sunni political prisoners were hanged. So, uh, this killing machine that is the Iranian regime is still working. Uh, the third point is that the same officials in charge of the 1988 massacre are still at the top of the Islamic uh, Republic and are involved in the suppression and destruction of all opposition, all democratic, peaceful opposition inside the Iranian society. Uh, these people include uh, poor Mohammadi, that, as I said before, is now the uh, Minister of, of Justice. But it must be said that Mr. Poor Mohammadi, who is the Minister of Justice, has stated these days he's very proud of having organized and executed the massacre of 30,000 defenseless people that were arrested prisoners in that time. He's proud of it. Uh, I, we, we all have heard that we, the Western governments are very happy because now in Iran there is a moderate government because uh, Rouhani won, won the election, so the moderate won the elections. So a moderate government where sit criminals against humanity is a strange concept of moderation, at least under my point of view. Uh, and of course, we have called for the 1988 massacre to be on the agenda of the current Human Rights Council. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights must issue a call for an investigation in this regard. The upcoming session of the General Assembly in New York in October must issue a resolution and call for an investigation into this massacre and refer its dossier to the Security Council. We also urge the UN Security Council to form an international tribunal, an international court, to examine this case and prosecute those that were responsible for this crime against humanity. And let me conclude by asking all of you, including those that probably are watching this meeting live on, on TV or internet to make sure that the sacrifice of these 30,000 political prisoners who were brutally hanged will be remembered, will not be forgotten, and that the criminals who are ruling Iran today will be prosecuted and brought to justice. In that sense, I want to end this uh, intervention saying that we urge Western governments to condition their relationship with Iran to a suspension and halt of executions. Thank you.